What's up, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. I do intend to make a video, hopefully still tonight, previewing the Wilder-Ortiz fight. But I had just seen the weigh-in, and I wanted to talk about something I had noticed. But first and foremost, this is Deontay Wilder on April 20th or thereabouts, 2016, right before the Povetkin fight that never happened. Talking about how he comes into camp at about 240, he's in camp at about 235 pounds and how he's hoping to still put on maybe 10 pounds of weight. For aesthetic purposes... And as Ness insinuates to maybe help him, and Deontay Wilder agrees, to maybe help him, you know, be able to manhandle and bully some of his opponents, a la Klitschko versus Povetkin, for example, seeing as that is the fight that was never supposed to happen at that point in time. So Wilder is... 235, let's say, while in camp, right? In good shape, not a lot of body fat on him. And wants to get up to about 240, 245. That's what he's aiming for, right? April 20th, 2016. This is, that was, right after he fought and knocked out Artur Spilka. Now, Artur Spilka was begging Deontay Wilder to do VADA testing. And even though Deontay Wilder officially agreed, according to Spilka, he never did do any drug testing. Okay? And I suppose seeing as there's been some pressure on Deontay Wilder to do VADA testing, get off the PEDs and do VADA, right? I mean, this is what I've always heard, is that when you say no to extra drug testing, that's proof positive, according to the overwhelming majority of people out there, that you are on PEDs, right? So we all agree that Deontay Wilder was on PEDs, right? Of course. Just trying to hold you up to your own standard. But that was right around the time, I believe, when the WBC were implementing their clean boxer program and there was some extra added pressure on Deontay to get tested. So that's right around the time where he actually started getting tested. And going into the Povetkin fight, there was VADA testing, right? Which is how Deontay Wilder was able to duck Povetkin, even though Povetkin didn't fail any tests, but... I've covered that plenty in the past, and what I say is a fact. I try to do that, by the way, as much as possible. But that was right. That was the first time that Deontay Wilder started doing drug testing. And while he was talking about wanting to put on all these weight, this weight, when you look at his weigh-ins, he's actually been losing weight. So me, while he wants to put on weight... And it would make sense. I mean, 230 was probably a good weight for this guy. But it, w it wouldn't be a bad idea necessarily to try to put on some weight, a little bit more weight, and, and see how that worked, right? You definitely, you don't want a 6'7", six, 6'7", seven, six seven heavyweight with an 83-inch reach. You don't want him coming into the ring weighing what the average cruiserweight does, right? Like about 215 pounds, right? You, don't, you definitely don't want that. That we can all agree on. And yet, even though Deontay Wilder is talking about wanting to put on this weight, as he started doing VADA testing, he actually started losing his gains that he was so proud of and wanted to continue getting. Interesting, isn't it? Now, I do understand... If this indeed is true and Vara is making him lose his gains, my whole theory of Vara and the WBC actually allowing fighters to juice uh, was null and void. I, I completely understand that. Maybe I am wrong about that. 
despite the fact that the WBC do give passes to their favorite fighters, maybe they're not exactly encouraging them to juice either. Maybe they are trying to clean up the sport, but kind of, you know, being half-assed about it. It's kind of, especially taking the Lewis Neary situation into consideration, that's kind of what it's starting to look like. So I'm willing to admit that maybe I took it a little bit overboard with my conspiracy theory. But that being said, again, while Deontay Wilder is bragging about wanting to put on more weight, which may or may not have been a good idea when he was 230, He's actually steadily losing the weight, which cannot be a good idea, right? And I know some people might want to say, well, 214 is going to be great because, and he's doing it on purpose because he wants to use his legs, right? And he wants to move a lot and he wants to be light. Yeah, but he was 220 almost against Stavern and he moved just fine. He moved in the Molina fight at 230. He moved against Duapa. He didn't move a whole lot against Spirka because Spirka was the one moving. But there was no, there, there never been any stamina issues with Deontay Wilder at, at 230 pounds. You know what I mean? And he has shown good movement and lots of it at that weight. So that theory, uh, especially in light of the fact that this has been a gradual drop ever since he started doing drug testing, which he refused to do in the Spielka fight, right? And it would actually make sense that now that Deontay Wilder was forced to do drug testing himself and lose the gains that he no doubt, as everybody in the YTBC believes, he attained unnaturally prior to the Spielka fight. So seeing as Deontay Wilder has been basically forced to do drug testing, extra VARA drug testing, it will kind of make sense that he's been paying the WBC extra money, according to Pauli Malinaji, to really test his opponents also, right? If, if, if he has to do it, if he can't have his PEDs, nobody can, right? So in a way, he has been using the clean boxer program to, you know, drain his opponents to, to duck fights like the Povietkin fight because Povietkin did not fail a test when it came to meldonium, and that's just a fact, no matter what shills like Montero might want to tell you. It's just a fact. It's not debatable. It's a fact. But anyway, you know, seeing as Deontay Wilder seemingly had been forced to give up all those gains he was so proud of, if only for, you know, narcissistic reasons, it would make sense that he's been extra adamant about making his opponent suffer the same fate, if not worse. You know what I mean? And I just find it interesting that because 214 is not a good weight for a guy that's 6'7 with an 83 inch reach and that's fighting guys that are 240 easily, right? So it seems that even though Deontay Wilder has been bragging about wanting to move up or bulk up, he's actually, and quite frankly, probably much to his dismay, has actually been forced to drop his ill-gotten gains. How's that for a racial reference? Seeing as that's all that uh, Wilder fans. Deontay Leshen Wilder. What kind of a fucking name is Leshen? <laughs> it, no, it's not Leshan. That's not how you spell Leshan. It's Leshen. <laughs> kind of a fucking name is that? Anyway, 214, guys. 215. That's crazy. Did Vara make Deontay Wilder lose his gains? His ill-gotten gains? I think so. But you let me know what you think. Thank you for listening.